Sir, what do you make of uh, the argument that, you know, um, had this just been a case of, uh, you know, a strong fine being imposed at the time of uh, uh, the incident itself 20 years ago, had, uh, you know, the, the conviction not happened uh, such a long time later, 20 years later, that perhaps, uh, you know, public memory would have also sort of forgiven Salman Khan that all the efforts he's made towards, you know, this image makeover might have actually uh, made a bigger impact had things happened on time. See, Salman Khan has been the, uh, the controversial uh, boy of uh, Bollywood. You know, he's the famous person, but he's controversial nonetheless. You know, whether it comes to his, uh, whether it comes to the case of hit and run, whether it is this black buck killing, whether there have been cases where, you know, he has uh, indulged in fist fight with his colleagues, you know, or his personal life. You know, he has been controversial. He is also known for his uh, temperament, uh, shooting anger, but he is also known for his generosity. He is also known for his friendships. He is also known for his charity. He is successful because he is the most bankable star today, but he is controversial because people have this feeling that he got scot free in that uh, hit and run case. So it's not as if Salman Khan uh, is not controversial. Apart from being controversial, the larger issue also here is that, they, as I was saying, that there is a feeling that somehow, since he was, he is Salman Khan and he's a very famous actor, he was able to push the case, uh, elongate it for such a long time. If any other person would have been in his uh, shoes, perhaps the case would have ended in five years because it was a very simple case. And there were multiple cases filed on him. For example, there was a case... Uh, you know, which was part and parcel of this Aisha, uh, which was about whether the uh, whether that particular arm belonged to him or not. So it was true that it does not belong to him. But the fa the, the matter boiled down to one simple fact: who shot the animal? Right. So that's how he has you know he has been convicted. But I would say that if we keep the investments aside, if we keep other things aside, at least I I as a citizen say would say it's a welcome development. Lower courts very rarely go after heavy duty people. At least in this case, the lower court has actually convicted a person. It's not about Salman being free, so you know, Salman being a very famous actor, so he needs to get you know uh, persecuted for it. But but for the simple reason that the lower court has held him accountable, right. and the bottom line is that, and I think he'll spend 48 hours in jail or maybe 72 hours, and then he may, in bail is his right. You know he'll be uh, he'll be allowed to uh, sign and seek that application from the uh, Jaipur High Court and. Uh, in all probability, he might get bail uh, the way he got bail in previous uh, uh, episodes. Sure. Uh, Mr. Kemkar, despite that delay though, has the message that gone, has gone out today with today's verdict uh, been a strong one that it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter what kind of celebrity status you might have, you're not above the law? <laughs> Mr. Kemka, that but, question uh, was for you. The lower courts, yeah. I, I'll have to disagree a bit with, from, with Kartike when he says that the lower courts uh, don't go after the uh, big ticket people. You know, it is actually the other way around. If you see the history of many cases, they, it is the, uh, the lower courts have been handing out uh, big punishments, big sentences. It is only in the high courts and supreme courts that the people are getting relief. You know, if, as defense counsels, we always say that we don't get relief in the lower courts. So that is that is actually our problem. You know, so it is normally that it is uh, where wherever a lenient view has to be taken, it is normally the uh, low, uh, higher courts uh, who have uh, you know who have wider powers. They take these lenient views. The uh, lower courts normally go by the book. They just uh, go by the evidence and the book. They don't uh, take other things into consideration normally. So uh, it is uh, that way. And of course, the message must go that however big you might be, however powerful you might be, the law will uh, take its own course. Law will catch up with you. The only thing uh, or the only problem is that when that message comes after 20 years, that is almost after when one generation has passed. The people who are today in college or today, you know, uh, are joining the work uh, place, they they don't even know about this case. You know, 20 years is a very, very long period. So, and the, it also uh, creates a very bad impression about the judicial system. The, the 
trust of the people didn't dwindles when they come to know that it takes 20 years in a particular court to decide a case you know there is section 309 in crpc which says that all trials will be conducted on day to day basis now that section is virtually virtually not even noticed by in any of the courts so that is a very very big irony that these trials which should actually the law mandates that they should go on on day to day basis they are dragged for such long periods like 20 years it certainly i mean the effect of the punishment effect of the law catching up with the powerful is not that much the message uh, of 20 year delay is far more uh, greater than the law catching up because it actually neutralizes the whole impact that's a that's a really important point that you've raised and i suppose uh, you know the uh, the little bit you added about uh, the generation that has gone by uh, you know people who were not even uh, uh, you know who've started work now weren't even around perhaps when this uh, entire case uh, got reported the first time in 1998 uh, manish mohan if i can uh, come to you next does this open up questions also on whether the law itself is strong enough when it comes to the wildlife protection uh, act uh, given that these are endangered species uh, that they are also species that are considered sacred uh, by certain communities in India such as the Bishnois. See as far as this Wildlife Protection Act is concerned it is uh, in fact very comprehensive in every sense and uh, one cannot say actually that it has got any lacuna or it's lacking in any aspect of the matter. So that way, there is no difficulty with law. It's just that it got all the right publicity or whatever you can say through this case and through these set of celebrities. It's just a different case. But the most important point which I would like to make here sure. is that there are all these special enactments like the... Uh, this Wildlife Protection Act or be it the Prevention of Corruption Act or be that the SCST Atrocity, Prevention of Atrocities Act, there should be a time-bound trial of all cases in such special acts because these special acts are meant for a purpose and the entire purpose behind the special enactments gets lost when these cases are dragged for years and years and in this case 20 years. So therefore, the entire purpose, the motive of the legislature, the noble cause for which these enactments were, these enactments were passed by the legislature, it becomes autoized. Absolutely. Uh, Satan, of course, the other flip side to all of this, I suppose, is the fact that despite all of these controversies surrounding uh, Salman Khan, uh, you know, the hit and run case, the black bar case, uh, multiple other reports of, uh, you know, his violent nature, uh, and of course, uh, on the other side, all these reports of him being benevolent, him being a charitable person, um, it's not really made as big an impact as you would imagine on his career, though. There is, uh, you know, a lot of money that's still riding on him. Uh, he has multiple ventures, as you were pointing out for us. Absolutely, Aisha. And uh, my guess is that it will not because uh, of the sheer amount of money that rides on him. And second, which is his fandom, his image that uh, that is that they've continuously evolved at least in the last decade. If you look at uh, his Being Human Foundation, if you look at the roles that he has done in the last few years, and also Salman Khan is someone who guarantees a box office blockbuster. He's the only actor to have three films in the 300 crore club until last year. As of 2017 metrics, he was the highest paid actor in Bollywood. Right. So Sadal, all of this. Uh, pardon me for interrupting you there. Uh, I'll come back to you in a second. Uh, the former additional uh, solicitor general uh, Vikas Singh is joining us on the phone line from New Delhi. Uh, thank you sir for speaking with us here at Vion. Um, despite the delay, uh, despite this 20 year gap, do you think uh, today's verdict has sent out a strong message all the same? Well, uh, if the judgment is correct, uh, definitely it's a very good message but you know the last word has not been sent in the matter and uh, this matter will definitely go in appeal and justice will only be finally done if when the appellate court decides. But the problem for Salman Khan would be that uh, in normally in criminal matters, when a conviction take place, takes place, the appellate court normally does not suspend the sentence unless you have undergone half the sentence. And if that normal uh, um, um, procedure were to be applied in this case, 
then he'll have to at least wait for two and a half years before the sentence is suspended unless the evidence that has been looked at by the trial judge is so, so perverse that the appellate court on the very face of it finds it to be uh, completely uh, bereft of uh, any reasoning. Uh, it is only in those very extreme circumstances that uh, he may be ready to the suspension of the sentence at the time of the admission of his appeal. So, uh, really speaking, um, uh, it's good that a decision has finally come because uh, prolonging a case like this for 20 years is definitely something which is uh, uh, despicable and uh, justice delayed, they say, is justice denied. Absolutely. But uh, at least finality has come now and to that extent we should uh, appreciate it. What do you make of uh, the argument that, you know, the celebrity status of the protagonist involved in this case has led to this, uh, you know, delay in proceedings that has, uh, you know, given uh, people like Salman Khan uh, the long end of the stick, so to speak. Uh, do you think that's, a, that's a, an argument that needs to be looked at as well? Well, as far as the celebrity status is concerned, it works both ways. Definitely, uh, it has uh, resulted in the delay of the appeal and uh, sometimes the celebrity status also, you know, puts the judge in so much of glare that if he were even wanting to give the benefit of doubt to an ordinary person, he feels that if he gives the same benefit of doubt to a person who is a celebrity and the way the media will analyze his judgment, you know, uh, uh, word by word and line by line uh, and if it doesn't stand to scrutiny, then his career will be doomed. So definitely it works both ways. It is not only that he has delayed the trial, it is also the other way that uh, he may have been convicted when an ordinary person may not have been convicted on the same evidence. So that's that's something which I really don't, uh, um, I, I feel that uh, it can't be said that it works only one way. Fair enough. As far as the Fair enough. And, and if I can also ask you, uh, before we let you go, uh, this interestingly, of course, involves uh, animals. Uh, you know, uh, he has been on the long, wrong side of the law when it came to the uh, hit and run case. But the fact that this uh, is to do with the Wildlife Protection uh, Act of 1972, do you think this case, because of the celebrity, has also brought necessary attention to uh, the endangered species in this country and uh, the kind of laws uh, that surround their protection? Definitely, because of the media attention that this case will get, a lot of people who would not be knowing by now that this kind of an offence uh, can be, you know, punished and uh, uh, you can face trial for uh, doing something like this. Uh, that message definitely will uh, go sp spread wild and fast, and uh, uh, an average person who may not be thinking this to be so serious will now realize the gravity of uh, uh, doing something like this with an endangered species. So, um, uh, to that extent also, this celebrity status will uh, give some uh, uh, coverage to this uh, Wildlife Protection Act and, uh, and also help the uh, preservation of these species which are supposed to be protected under the Act. All right, uh, Vikas Singh, thank you, uh, sir, for speaking with us this afternoon, sharing your perspective uh, with us. Uh, before uh, we continue our discussion with our guests, uh, let me quickly uh, let our viewers listen in to what the lawyer had said a short while ago after the quantum of sentence was pronounced. Salman Khan ko nau bata hai ikon mein dosi maante hue paanch varsh ki saja aur dash saja rupee jurmane se arupit kiya gaya hai. Tatha kyunki paanch varsh ki saja hui hai, uska giriftari warrant ban chuka hai. Or we central jail bheja jayega. All right, let me go back to uh, my guests, uh, Amit Khemka, uh, Manish Mohan, both uh, senior lawyers joining us on the broadcast, as is my uh, colleague, uh, Sejal Pandey. Sejal, to you in just a second. Mr. Khemka, if I can come across to you, the, the role of the media, of course, has also been brought up, uh, as Mr. Vikas Singh did uh, a short while ago. And I suppose uh, it goes hand in hand. Where there is celebrity, the media will be in all involved. Um, again, though, does this uh, demonstrate in some way uh, the double-edged uh, nature of a case such as this, that that if the media doesn't get involved, it'll be called, uh, you know, uh, superficial, uh, not interested in uh, following through on a case. But if it does get involved, there are other sort of allegations that are uh, thrown towards, uh, uh, you know, uh, journalists and media alike. Of course, uh, the media has to uh, play its role. Of course, uh, it is the duty of media to bring out the facts and I don't, uh, I have no problems, even if uh, the media criticizes the courts, 
though in a uh, very very positive uh, manner the demeanor uh, should never be uh, you know scandalization or anything like that uh, the criticism of the court is very very is allowed the i welcome the criticism of my profession i welcome the i mean i am a critic critic of my own profession you know so that is not a problem so it is the job of the media and they, nobody can fault the media but you know that there are channels you know that there are media hub pe people who you know who play the prosecutor the judge and the jury everything they play so you know that is the problem i mean that uh, that kind of journalism of course has to be objective too but you know coming back to your question that in spite of uh, uh, mr salman khan have been facing such serious criminal charges for so long his uh, uh, actually his film career is actually doing very well you know you must recollect uh, the statement of uh, mr kiran rijuju our uh, mos home when he said that the people in this country love to uh, commit love to do offense love to commit crime you know and the uh, proof of that is that the pictures like dabang or pictures like bagi you know those kind of movies here a person who is on the wrong side of the law in our country he is respected he is i mean the uh, it is a very unfortunate situation that a, uh, that the pictures like dabang uh, are uh, big hits where a police officer is seen committing all kinds of uh, illegalities all kinds of uh, i mean he becomes a hero while he is uh, showing shown seek uh, taking bribe sure. he is shown the, the wrong side of the law so this is a very unfortunate situation to which the social scientists of this country must address and will have to address Fair that enough. people fact, who are of course are... there is that argument of creative license and freedom of expression that comes in when when we're talking about movies such as that one uh, stay with me a second uh, uh, manish mohan uh, you know the point of course being as uh, mr kemka is pointing out despite the fact that uh, you know he's uh, you know flirted with trouble for so long uh, the money the uh, the kind of attention that salman khan continues to enjoy in the film fraternity his movie is doing so well uh, abroad as well china is a huge market for instance uh, does that again also underline the fact that this goes beyond just the judiciary it also calls into question uh, you know relationships in uh, big industries like uh, the film industry in india that as long as uh, money is to be made it really doesn't matter what's going on when it comes to somebody's uh, uh, personal life or uh, you know the fact that they might be on the wrong side of the law See, our legal system is based on the golden words, "Be you, however so high, law is above you." So it won't make any difference whether you are from which strata of the society, how much you are earning, and how much money is at stake. It comes to your career. But the issue, larger issue here is that. the trial must be in such a an expeditious manner that the people who have seen the wrong being committed or who have heard of wrong being committed come to know of the fate of wrong doer so that there is some degree of fear about law catching up with the wrong doers if that fear is not there if it is not if the entire legal process is not a deterrent in itself then the purpose gets lost such lengthy trials are not going to have a deterrent effect on the wrong doers right uh, but then what what is this thing? ultimately if allow me to come in sir amit kemka uh, what is the solution that we keep talking about the fact that you know these lengthy trials and uh, you know justice delayed is justice denied that it's taken far too long uh, for this to happen that the import of this decision has uh, gotten diluted by the time that it's taken for it to come about but but how does that change how do you know th these processes change at all especially when celebrities are involved be uh, you can't be ad hoc about the changes you know, the supreme court on the uh, recommendations of the law commission and the police commission has 
uh, way back in 2006-2007 has given the directions for the implementation of police reforms. Now, if you don't implement those reforms, you won't have proper investigation. If you will not have proper investigation, the very, very basis for any conviction, for the very basis for any prosecution is lost right at the Right, right at the beginning of it if the investigation is not proper if the you know in this particular case you will uh, you you will recollect what had happened was that salman khan said that i have lost a revolver and what the police recovered was a was a rifle so this is the this is the funny way the investigation in this country is being conducted and unless you bring in those reforms unless you are serious about bringing in those reforms it is not only that you just bring them on paper you have to be serious about it and unless you have good investigation no amount no amount of good judges no amount of good advocates are, can do anything because if the in, if at the initial stage the evidence is lost if the evidence is not properly collected what will you do in the trial after all the investigation the whole trial has to be based on cogent evidence it has to be you know it has to be very very solid evidence in a criminal case so if the investigator it himself is not trained if he himself does not know how to do it if he is not honest if he is not performing his duty there are no controls on him so after all the investigations would keep continue to be of very very shabby nature and then the result would be that the whole whole uh, criminal justice system will look like uh, this only to the people at large you know it is it is starts from there i'm not saying that the fault does not lie with the legal profession right. the fault does not lie with the judiciary i'm not saying that but the uh, very basis that i say the reforms are required even in legal profession reforms are required in judiciary and the other aspect is the appointment of judges you if you don't have enough number of judges if the judges are overloaded of course the quality of justice is bound to suffer of right. course the dates to be given you know so the, all these problems have to be sorted out at the level of the governments only and 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 going by that word overloaded that you've used uh, you know there we keep uh, uh, of course hearing about the fact that uh, there is a lot of load on the judges already in this country and to connect that to your point about you know social scientists uh, understanding behavior also um is is the problem in some ways also that criminal behavior in india isn't an aberration it sometimes is the norm which is uh, you know unfortunate and and if celebrities of uh, the stature of salman khan and the kind of following that they uh, you know have the kind of support that they enjoy among their fan base uh, if they too think it's all right to you know be on the wrong side of the law then the problem is much larger than just about uh, the judiciary and uh, the investigative procedures in india of of course you know the people in responsible position and you know sometimes i have heard the film uh, people saying that oh i am not the i am not the government it is a job of the government or i am not the police i am i am not supposed to i am i am just in the entertainment industry so i am sorry to say that if you are ready to enjoy the celebrity status if you want to enjoy that there is responsibility attached to it you should be responsible for the uh, to the public at large after all a country where we have almost 40% people who are totally illiterate who worship you like gods you don't have any responsibility towards them how funny an argument that could that that is after all you are demi gods so if you are demi gods you have certain responsibility you must bear that responsibility even the makers of the films they can't you know they every film is actually uh, if you see half of the films are actually uh, you know uh, the violence is kind of uh, glamorized now if violence is glamorized anybody on the street any uh, illiterate person on the street would think that violence is fine so if you make it fine i mean you have to have be responsible about it if you if I, you are a celebrity you must send a good message to the public at large there are illiterate people there are people who don't even have bread to eat so all these people look towards you they don't know whether you are just an actor right. they look at you as semi gods absolutely so there is a, no doubt about the responsibility and of course accolades uh, come with their share of brickbats as well but sejal uh, while we were talking you know that uh, 
Uh, all right, before I come to you, Sejal, live shots there on your screen of uh, the man at the center of all of this, Salman Khan. Uh, this is uh, live visuals coming in from Jodhpur in Rajasthan. Remember, Salman Khan has been found guilty by that Jodhpur court. He's going to be taken to the Jodhpur Central Jail where he'll be spending the night. Most certainly, he's uh, been handed out a sentence of five years and a 10,000 rupee fine uh, after he was found guilty in the Black Buck poaching case dating back to 1998. Let those visuals play uh, while I go across to my colleague uh, Sejal Pandey. Sejal, you know, while we were having that conversation a short while ago, uh, our graphics uh, team was uh, playing out or those visuals of all the movies that are slated to be released that involve uh, Salman Khan. There's a huge uh, release on Eid that's coming up. And I suppose uh, that just uh, highlights once again the fact that, you know, the, the industry is going to carry on. The movies are going to continue to come out. And uh, this case, this verdict, uh, perhaps not going to make that big of a dent as far as his image goes, as far as his ability to make money goes. Absolutely won't, Aisha. Uh, my guess is that filmmakers wouldn't take that dent in the pocket because of Salman Khan getting convicted. It's a matter of 100 crore rupees for each of them. There are about seven films that are uh, slated to release between 2018 and 2021. That's just uh, between those seven films, there's uh, multiples of 700 crores. Uh, but also, uh, taking on from Mr. Kamka, what he said was there is a certain responsibility that lies on the filmmaker. There's a responsibility that lies on the actor, uh, which, which uh, you know, films are used. The PR game is used to sort of course correct the offenses that an actor makes. Uh, the creative freedom is used and spun around in a completely different way uh, to, to sort of create a persona that stays on with the fans. Like Mr. Kamka said, that uh, there, are, there is an uneducated audience that uh, sort of goes and watches these films. Uh, Salman Khan is often called Robin Hood Khan. He's called the man of the masses. Uh, his, uh, his fans cut across uh, demographics and geographies. So here there are people watching Salman Khan portray uh, someone who will, uh, you know, uh, put everything on stake, put his life on stake and cross borders and save a little girl, uh, take her back to her family in films like Bajrangi Bhaijan. And then on the other hand, there is that there's vested interest of the filmmakers of their hundreds and crores of rupees that's riding a upon Salman Khan, who's the only actor in Bollywood to have three films in the 300 crore club. He is the highest earning actor in Bollywood, 230 crore rupees in earnings as of 2017, Aisha. Absolutely. And, and I think uh, you put that so poignantly for us. Uh, the description itself of uh, some of these movie plots uh, put across very vividly by my colleague Sejal Pandey, going to show the sort of larger than life image that is often uh, associated with someone like Salman Khan. Uh, visuals on your screen, of course, live from Jodhpur, also demonstrative of how um, the Indian public uh, has uh, you know, seen its, its life were brought to a standstill in that city. Uh, traffic jams uh, a little while earlier uh, shown near certain roundabouts in the city as uh, the actor is taken across to the Jodhpur Central Jail. For those of you who are just joining us on the broadcast, here's a quick reminder of what's gone on in the last half an hour, 45 minutes or so. Um, Salman Khan has been given a five-year jail term. Additionally, uh, a 10,000 rupee fine has been slapped on him, slapped on him in uh, the uh, 1998 Black Buck poaching case. He has of course the option of applying for bail um through a higher court, but today he will have to spend the night at the Jodhpur Central Jail. He's been convicted in the poaching case just earlier. Other actors, including uh, Saif Ali Khan, uh, Tabu Neelam, have, uh, as well as Sonali Bendre, have been acquitted um, in the very same case. But Salman Khan uh, finds himself convicted and sentenced to five years in jail for that uh, criminal offense dating back to 1998. We've got time for uh, one last uh, quick reaction. Let me go across to uh, Amit Kemka before we uh, wrap up this uh, bulletin and uh, head into a quick break. Mr. Kemka, uh, you know, you've, you've taken us through uh, a number of uh, aspects uh, dealing with this particular case. But just to drive home the point once more for viewers who are joining us, th the fact that it's taken 20 years, sure, it's diluted uh, perhaps the import of, uh, you know, the case itself. But still, a strong message all the same going out today from the Jodhpur court. Uh, you know, uh, my view is that uh, I told you that uh, it uh, this delay actually neutralizes that, uh, you know, strength from that message, as you said, a strong message. So that strength is actually neutralized 
uh, you could say that it is a message as vikas ji said that uh, yes people would come to know that uh, the consequences of committing an offense under wildlife protection act are quite severe but uh, people know that uh, uh, there uh, the raping a woman uh, i mean there are quite serious uh, consequences but still rapes keep on increasing our society but that is because they think that they can get around the law they can buy witnesses they can influence the even the victims they can uh, delay the trials so they know all that as well so when they know all this can happen so that just the deterrent punishment is not going to help unless the unless the punishment unless the conviction unless the sentence is very very quick it is very very all very very certain unless that happens it is not going to uh, act as a deterrent at all that is my view and i really don't think that any strong message is going because people still believe that uh, in few months time or few weeks time or maybe uh, tomorrow itself uh, the matter will be mentioned before a higher court and uh, in all likelihood big lawyers will appear and uh, the man will get the bail as it has happened in the earlier case as well so uh, you know uh, that that also cannot be overlooked that message is already there with the people so uh, what would be the message going from this case or from this punishment i i really don't uh, understand that you know i don't think there is much of a message going okay i respect your view point uh, and uh, of course you are highlighting a very important factor of this case one that can't be ignored at all does this really send out a strong message does it act as a deterrent as we'd hoped uh, it would we'll have to leave it at that for now uh, all of you uh, manish mohan amit khemka and sejal pandey thank you all three for taking out the time this afternoon to speak with us and uh, you know look into further detail as far as this particular case